begin now. Okay, great. Um, one was, um, you know, bike path signage, you know, along Prospect Street, and, you know, there's Stoddard Street and um, Jackson Street, just to, to get people, um, you know, from the bike path into Northampton. Uh, I do support the Main Street for everyone. So, the more people that can get down there, but I think signage to get people on the bike path. And there's a lot of entry points along Prospect Street. And then there is a, another entry point on Woodmont Road that's over near Market Street. So just signage that would get people to um, the bike path. I did have a, a run in with a um, a driver that was on, um, well, it had it happen twice. Um, once right next to the Taco Bell entrance to the bike path, and then a second time right off of Woodmont Street, where it looked like they were heading towards the tunnel. Um, but I, I did notice within that back time, there are signage, there is signage there that no motorists, um, but it was just kind of odd to see. Uh, there was an uh, there was a vehicle a motor vehicle you're yes saying, yeah on yeah. the bike path yeah there was one um there was like i said earlier probably last year trying to go down the bike path entrance um, right next to taco bell um and then there yeah just uh, no tacos there no tacos no so um and the tunnel which i consider or i call taco bell tunnel um has been flooded twice this year over the summer and um you know i know that with the um, increased amount of rain if that's going to happen more often um one at one point earlier in the year i had um september 8th it was flooded um and july 16th um, to, both to the point where I think there may have been two to three feet of water in the in the tunnel itself. And you can sort of see where the the grade there does sort of enter right into the tunnel at that point. Yes. Um, two or three feet of depth or so the tunnel itself was full, you know, with two to three feet of, of water. Yeah. Thank you. So if you rode through it, you know, it would be above your bottom bracket yeah, and basically yeah. you. your feet would be in the water. So it was kind of um, uh, interesting to see that because when I got to that point, there were some bike back bike packers who were sort of stymied as to get how to get around. So I led them back up um, Woodmont to I, I think that's Market Street. And then we entered uh, further down by the um uh, Montessori school. So um, that happened. Um, and I'm also curious about what the um, uh, the speed designation is for the bike path. I know that, um, you know, I'm on it pretty much five, at least five days a week. And I've seen um, e-bike riders, some on class two bikes, which are throttle bikes where they don't have to pedal at all. Um, and others on class three bikes, which have a top speed of 28 miles an hour. So I don't know um, if these are considered motorized vehicles. Um, some of the folks on the throttle bikes are not pedaling. So, you know, I don't know what kind of designation could be made or if there is even is some type of designation for e-bikes on the bike. But I've just noticed that some people uh, carry quite a bit of speed. Um, and last but not least, and I know this, so the bike path is sort of divided between Northampton and then it turns into the DCR or DRC um, and Northampton plows and then the DRC, DCR does not plow. So does, does that um, designation stop right after you get through the tunnel and then it DCR takes up from that point on into Hadley and Amherst and yes okay <laughs> so then yes the plowing um because again um I try to ride pretty much year round and you know there are some days where the bike path can be a little a little dicey and the bridge especially can be a little more dicey because of the wood planking I think um you know, freeze thaws. So even if uh, it can get more icy, I think, than the bike path itself. But if that's not something that Northampton covers, then um, maybe it's, I need to, you know, I just love to, I, I, not only for bikers, but for dog walkers and runners, I think it would be great if the bike path were, were plowed. But I know there's some um, 
financial concerns about who would plow it and how much it would cost to plow. Um, and I think, I think that's it. Great, thanks. We can talk about some of those um, issues later on the agenda because they were talking about signs. The FNT is saying so. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say that been totally repeated, but at least a fair, at least one recent fairly extensive email conversation on the one of the local list serves about plowing mm -hmm. the sections of paths and right. the, the impediments to that. So uh, if you are interested in that conversation, I'm sure we could get you hooked into that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, if there's any way. Um, so after the meeting, maybe you could have forward. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Put you up on what's been already said. Yeah, thank you. Great, thanks. Um, oh, geez. Sorry, two more people in the. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I didn't realize that. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry about that. Um, are there any more? Are there other public comments from Zoom? Um, just raise your electronic hand or your real hand. Okay. Um, all right. Seeing none, we can start. Oh. Oh. Did you see someone? Uh, Linda seems to be off. There seems to be unmuted. Yes. Yeah. I did have a public con comment. I don't know why my picture is not showing up. I apologize for that. My name is Linda Gothier, and I'm a resident on Glendale Road and a big cyclist, about 5,000, 7,000 miles a year. And my comment, and I'm trying to get more involved in how the city is addressing cycling in the city and commuting. And one of one of the things that's most on my mind is the clearing of the public bike paths of debris year round um, on Glendale Road. My my immediate bike lane is Route 66, which is covered in debris and tires are one hundred dollars a tire. And this kind of is all of the bike lanes that exist. And I know there's plans for all of these new bike lanes. They're going to need budgets and proposals but it feel like the bike lanes that we currently have are in horrific shape and destroy our tires. So that was my first comment. I have others, but I guess I'm just really wanting to know how this committee works and how it addresses these types of things from cyclists and uh, in the city and residents. Um, thanks. So typically during public comment, you know, we take comments and we can t take the um, issues up on a um, if there's time at the end of the agenda or on a later agenda. So um, I know that um, clearing the bike lane has um, been brought up on previous agendas. So um, in public comment. Um, so basically, the and and then just to answer your question about what this committee does it's a it's an advisory committee to the transportation and parking committee so um the committee can bring can discuss issues and then bring recommendations to the tpc um but again sort of specific issues um we can certainly delve into in more detail on um notice agenda so that people who are interested in that topic um, can participate if they wish. So thanks. Did you have other things on your uh, um, list as well, Linda? One of the things that I have that's represented by many of the cyclists I ride with is that we're increasingly concerned with the narrowing in, of the streets um, and the raising of the curbs that are making the roads that we need to ride on more dangerous. And I know it's an approach of calming for speeds, but the narrow road then means that cyclists, and I'm sure you're very familiar with the concept of taking the lane, that we then have to ride in the middle of the road because the road has been narrowed to such a degree. And then it's also replaced with a high curb, which I know is a favorite concept for traffic calming but it doesn't allow cyclists as an escape. For instance, my road, Glendale Road, was redesigned with high curbs to slow down traffic. And we've had near death cycling experiences on this road that are innumerable because of the traffic 
speeds and the narrowness. And we used to be able to ride up onto the grass and now we're forced with a major truck in a high curb that makes the road extremely dangerous. And I've spoken to Donna about the speeds on the street. There seems to be no ability for the city to address the speeds with vehicles, the size of vehicles and anything. But anyways, like calming for cars is making our city more dangerous for bicycling. And I'm not sure how many cyclists are actually involved in kind of these discussions that are out riding and going, wow, now a bike at 10 miles an hour just had to go in front of a car that's only going 25 miles an hour because there's nowhere else to go. Great. Um, okay, thank you. I noted that as well <laughs> um, to talk about in sort of the context of our um, complete streets um, conversations. So thanks, Linda. Um, any other public comments? Right. Is that Barbara's hand, hand, hand up, or is that? Or is that oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah. No. Thank you. I appreciate it. Need all eyes on. Um, so we'll go into the first agenda item. Um, this is a continuation of a conversation we had on, two, I think, two meetings ago. Um, and Claudia um, Lefko had asked to be put on the agenda again to talk about. Um, um, a sidewalk project in War Three. So go ahead, Claudia. So I've been here a number of times. Um, you all have my prospectus from what's called Deirdre's Walkway or maybe Deirdre Muccio's Walkway in Ward 3. So I'm not going to go over the whole plan because you can refer back to it. I'm just going to say part of the uh, perspective had to do with the people who'd signed on to the project and were interested. And I'm just going to remind you that there's the there are neighbors in Montview. There's New Village Child Care in Montview. There's Meadow City Conservation, which holds the conservation uh, restriction on the small area on Montview has signed on. There's the Tenants Association at the Lumber Yard. We have the friends and family of Deidre Muccio, who used to live at the Lumber Yard, who has since passed away. We have since talked to Andrew Larkin, who is becoming a well-known writer and who's a man who's losing his sight and who's interested in the project. And we've been working with this a woman uh, called uh, named Clark, a person Clark, Banker, who is the senior manager at the Commun of Community Inclusion Strategies Collaborative for Educational Services. Clark works in a building on Holly Street and um, has really been, been significant, has offered significant help in pulling all these people together and helping us imagine what this plan would look like. In addition, we've been working with Walk Massachusetts, which used to be called Walk Boston. So all these people have signed on to the idea of this, um, this the idea that we're going to construct some sort of a walkway that's going to serve both to integrate the uh, people living in the lumber yard with the people living in Montview and the, the general neighborhood for the purpose social integration and also getting people outside more for for health reasons for walking and for recreation since there's a playing field there. So at the last so we've been what we worked on the grant and I came to the committee seeking help seeking not help support so I essentially wanted you all to sign on I also went to the disabilities commission meeting and they were very interested so in the last so we worked on the grant Clark and I worked on this grant and at the last minute she said that of course um they what they needed was the city of Northampton to sign off on this grant and that the city can only apply for one grant of these. It's $18,000. And when it came down to it, the, the planning department decided to use the money for, for the trails behind Cutchins, as I understand it. 
And this was a huge blow to us. I was just at the Tenants Association meeting the other night, and people have serious issues with the sidewalks, even they're somewhat improved there, telling me they can't even get from their, uh, from the apartment to, say, the farmer's market to buy food, much less get to Montview, that people, they fall out of their wheelchair, they have all these disabilities. And of course, people with visual issues are also having trouble just whatever. So there's all this, there are all these issues going on in the neighborhood. And we really, this was for us a planning grant that would have enabled us to pull together various parts, including get a walkability assessment from um, Walk Massachusetts. But we were unable to apply for the grant. And I've had to go back and tell everybody now that we're sort of back to zero. And I must say, it's been a very depressing experience because because now we must go to some sort of other we have to look for other money we have to perhaps go to private funding in a situation where it doesn't seem like eighteen thousand dollars was very important to us but in the big picture of the city it doesn't seem like that much money and that cut and the montview conservation uh group which oversees the both cutchins uh and the the property at, at uh, Montview, they had no idea you were applying for this money as far as I could see, because I was at their meeting and there was some general idea. But but Cutchins has had a lot of improvement already and we've had nothing from the city in our area. So I'm I'm coming back to say that that it's depressing because because we're we're offering the city an incredible opportunity. Like we, you have all these organizations, including Smith, uh, Reed Bertoni Johnson. Smith is going to be using this as their their uh, lab project, and they were depending on some level on getting the walkability study, which costs five thousand dollars, and now we don't have it. So, you know, I feel like we've been working to to on our own to add something to the city and we haven't had any support and i'm very disappointed in this and we're not giving up but it it feels like we would get farther if we were working in collaboration and i feel like there is and i've said this the last time that there's a lot of attention to bicycling but walking is really important especially for people who have limited mobility issues. They're not, unless they get on a, one of these recumbent bikes or they, I know there's, you know, there are ways to get people out, but, but people are very excited about this project. And I just coming to beg you to see if you can see your way through to somehow offering us some sort of support about this. Uh, both Clark and the people at Walk Boston or Massachusetts, they want to, to do try to do this. And I'm not sure exactly how to proceed. So I'm coming on some level to just say that it's been a, a huge disappointment and I still need the support somehow of both the city and I would appreciate the help of this committee, but we're kind of stymied now and have to go back to the drawing board. And that's my update. Thanks. Um, Nick? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, I really am remain very excited about this project and I hadn't seen the um, the rationale and the background materials until I think very recently. And I apologize if I if I missed them from earlier, um, <clears throat> Claudia. I think your frustrations are 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 very you know very reasonable. That it this kind of juggling of where we are and where we want to be is very frustrating. Uh, if you're a walker, if you're a, a biker, if you're a resident or other other areas, I'm a property owner in that um, neighborhood, and I I know the issues that you're describing in terms of the kind of the infrastructure that's not in the place that we want it to be. Unfortunately, I think Maggie, Donna and Carolyn can attest to the fact that we have a lot of incredible amount of deferred maintenance on sidewalk infrastructures, on roads. And that's kind of holds us back because this is a place that is central, that is walkable. Getting more information on that, I think is gonna be, gonna be very exciting. And I think a, a really good opportunity for all the reasons you said. I don't have any kind of direct connection on the grant side, um, except I've seen how the city has been able to move projects forward. Um, when we think about larger projects, how they kind of work through the TIP process and the like, 
Um, and I'm hoping that we can continue to be of support and to kind of encourage the work in this area. When I was the um, president of the Friends of Northampton Trails, which intentionally did not have the word bike in anywhere in its in its name because we wanted to really complement other things, uh, bike advocacy organizations and the like. The map we put together, which I think was what, at the time the only map of the area that included walking paths, that included the little kind of gems of the conservation areas, like the ones you describe um, <coughs> by Montview Avenue. <coughs> I think all of these things are part of the idea of having a community where it is walkable, that's healthier, that allows people to be able to access things. And I'm hoping we can, can continue to be of support um, and to kind of gradually move this process forward, despite the bumps that we, you know, we've been feeling with this most recent um, update that you provided. Brett, did you have a comment? I had a clarifying question. You said you're back to, to square one. Um, is this a grant that is yearly or is this a one time ever grant? I think it comes around yearly. Okay. So I just want to like put we that in perspective. Yeah, yeah. So like a lot of projects in the city that are wonderful take a lot of time and that's frustrating, but you're not alone. I just wanted to put that in perspective for other projects. It just felt like we're competing. I mean, you know, with the city, which there's no, we have no power in that. And I know that. I mean, we we can wait a year on this, but actually when you mobilize a lot of people, which we have, we're not like an ongoing committee. Do you know what I mean? Sure. We, we're a coalition yeah. and and the momentum is is like, to, you know, is important in this, that people, you know, with the momentum is important. That's all I can say. And it's it's just, I don't know. Yeah. It sounds very I, frustrating. Yes, I hear you. I know. And I know that, and I I, mean, I know this is not something that will happen in a year. This is like probably, this is a huge thing we're talking about here. So yeah, many year project. Go ahead. I'll just, I'll just echo what my colleagues have said here, Claudia. First of all, while we may be bicyclists, we're also all walkers. And, mm -hmm. and we have, and if you look back in, in the notes of the 25 years I've been on this committee, we are always supporting uh, pedestrian projects, probably more than than bicycle projects. So, as I met, I said privacy. Yeah, yeah. The, the pendulum sort of swings. What mm -hmm. what the particular emphasis is at a particular time. But we are we're basically the anti car committee, and <laughs> uh, so uh, please know that we completely uh, support and care about and have supported and cared about all kinds of non motorized transportation, especially pedestrian. And this particular project, I think none of us thinks it's not worthy. We're, right. We all agree that this is a great project. It should go forward. We also have, each of us has a list of 10 such projects that we've been working on for dozens of years. Uh, I mean, I, I cannot tell you how many, right. I share your frustration and we all do. Right. And we have a tiny little purse of money that we're all trying to figure out how to squeeze um you know blood from a stone and make improvements yeah. and um yours is so new to us on the scale as Brecha said and as Nick said of the tens of years that projects normally take mm -hmm. I, I would say this committee is still probably getting used to the to the concept that you know yours fits on the landscape and we're grateful I'm I'll, I'll speak for myself I am grateful mm -hmm. for you and your um, and your friends and neighbors and colleagues and uh, and uh, uh, co-workers on this project for all the work you've done. It is, you are not going back to square one. I cannot tell you how many times we've had projects, all of us like this, that, uh, that don't get the grant the first year because there are five other worthy grants. I don't know anything about the competition that you described. And maybe Carolyn can enlighten us a little bit about, about this particular grant, this particular cycle, what the issues were. But the work that you invested, it's an investment and it's not going to go away. And yes. again, I, each of us could point to a dozen projects where we've rallied support. I mean, I've done tons of petitions for projects that are that are still not done from 20 years ago. Right. So yes. you're in yeah, good company I, and we share your frustration, right. but please don't be discouraged and, and don't feel that uh, what you perceive as resistance is actually opposition. It's, I, I think it's more likely short funding, uh, bureaucracy, busyness, and trying to figure out how to prioritize many worthy projects, including yours, that is, it, I, none of us will disagree, 
uh, is is highly worthy. I, if I could just ask a question about the priority list in, in the sense that. You know, the easiest part of this is the Montview Conservation Area, which could have improved accessibility for trails as opposed to the Cutchins. Um, but, but it didn't, you know, but, and so Cutchins keeps getting improved. It seems to me every, they, they have work days and they have money available and so forth. And we, and Montview hasn't got any money and the conservation area has been there for, I don't know, 10 or 20 years by now. You know, the city doesn't give us anything for mowing or we have one little sign there. So I'm just curious how you come up with a priority that what that would like with this a little bit of money, how does one um, measure it? Because it seems on some level the, the support the involvement of of people who are utilizing these these facilities, whether it's Cutchins or Montview, um, would be important in deciding how the money um, is spent or what kind of need there is. I don't. There's like on the ground information, I guess that 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 I don't feel. Um, I don't know how to measure that when I when the MC three group doesn't know that it's being spent on Cutchins. You know, they, but, but still, they, they get the money. So well, I can answer the question about the conservation area funding and Sarah LaValle talked to you about that project in particular. So and we about talked about Cutchins. No, about the conservation mm -hmm. area. So any kind of work that you envision or would like to gather community support around is definitely in a different bucket than on the city infrastructure. So that piece could move forward. You could talk to the Conservation Commission. You've talked to Sarah about that. And she suggested that any kinds of improvements to the conservation area, absolutely sort of different, different category of project. You could um, essentially phase it, which we talked to you about as well. It's sort of um, cut it into pieces and think about Montview, which can be funded completely in a different manner than public infrastructure. So in the public right of way, and we also talked a lot um, with you about the fact that um, we want to look at the entire infrastructure. So in parts of the neighborhood, there have been investments in sidewalks to the safe um, routes to school um, project and around um, Holly and from Pleasant Street but that the other pieces of the infrastructure in the neighborhood really need to be looked at holistically. And so that's part of the tension is sort of wanting to make sure you're not, we're not getting ahead on one piece when it's really connected to so many other pieces. So um, that's the, the piece about that, but absolutely reach out to Sarah again, if you want to think about phasing it and, and cutting it into pieces and looking at the, um, um, the Montview conservation piece, um, yeah, as a distinct phase. Yeah, I, and then pretty, I mean, and then I'll have we'll have to move on to the right. next. I mean, agenda I'll item. meet again with Sarah. Her recommendation to me was to talk to the DPW because because this the project crosses over. It's really a very out of the box project that involves both conservation area and public right of way, which is the sidewalks and private property, because there are people in the neighborhood who are willing to perhaps have, you know, this idea that you might seed some sidewalk so the sidewalk would go onto your property and you would give it to the, I mean, the, the whole part of this is like very out of the box and it's very holistic. So it's, it's, improvement of right of way it's improvement of conservation and it's also got this social you know health component to it and so that so it's very hard to say i'm not just wanting to concentrate on monview conservation i'm just saying it might be the easiest sometimes in terms of funding so and i want to take your time i appreciate it and it would be great if you would be able to tell me so exactly how could this committee be of, of help to me or any not to me but us in even thinking how to proceed. Like I think uh, that Clark um, has a good handle on this and has been extremely helpful to us. And she's just on Holly Street, which is very useful. So if if you would be able, if some people would, re I mean, somebody actually reached out, said they would come and do a walkability with me, but I never saw anybody come. But I we are totally willing to walk with people. The people from the lumber yard are very interested in that as well, so that they, you know, it's whatever. So I don't, I am a bit of a complainer. I appreciate, you know, I know these things take a long time. And this is a huge project. And so 
I'm heartened to hear that you're open to this continuing and that you might be able to offer some support for it. So my prediction is this this project is going to happen. <laughs> it, it is. I mean, with Inshallah all in my lifetime. No, it is. I mean, with all, <laughs> I the, all the investment and, and the and the uh, the demonstrated need. Right. I mean, it, it it seems like a totally worthy project that is going to happen. Thanks. So yeah. I appreciate your support. Um, okay, Nick, one more, and then we need to move on yeah, to the next. No, no, no. I, and I need, I need, we, I know we need to move on quickly. Claudia, again, I was the one who suggested as an individual, why don't you organize a, a walking tour, invite people to come to it, um, and I would be glad to be part of some such a thing if you did it. I think kind of raising that awareness is a way that this committee can be helpful of getting word out to a variety of different people and entities. Um, and so I think kind of the more people can start to see the vision and kind of experience it themselves, the better. But I know we need to move on. But thank yeah. you again for your efforts. Thanks very much. Thanks. And anybody is welcome to come. I, I offer an inv open invitation to come and see what we're envisioning there. And thanks a lot for the time. Great. Thank you. Um, Donna, you're up. Okay. Well, I'm trying to turn my camera on, but it doesn't seem to be working for some reason. Uh, hold on just a second. There we go. Maybe if I actually turned it on, it would work. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I just have a couple of updates from the DPW, and um, since we're headed into capital planning season, um, I just want to talk a little bit about traffic calming and that line item in the city's capital plan. Um, so as many of you may know, there's a uh, there's been this kind of historic item in the city's capital budget for um, uh, the general concept of traffic calming um, that's been funded at twenty five thousand dollars for many years. Um, and traditionally, that money has been kind of folded into our larger roadway reconstruction projects and. You know, if we put in a raised crosswalk somewhere or, or uh, like an RFP, um, you know, help pedestrians cross the street, you know, those are those um, flashing pedestrian uh, beacons, um, we would use that money. Um, and $25,000, unfortunately, does not buy you very much these days. Um, so it was becoming kind of increasingly difficult to you know, take this money and use it in any sort of meaningful way. So several years ago, we kind of shifted gears and thought that a better use of this money would be to um, try to take and uh, send things that were brought to us at TPC through our traffic counting process for further study. So, um, you know, I, I, I think most of you on here are familiar with our traffic counting process and, and we hear those concerns at TPC. Um, and then you do an engineering and speed analysis um, in partnership with uh, the police department. And then we can see like, is there actually a problem at this particular location or in this corridor? So what we've done is we have kind of changed how we're spending that traffic counting money um, to make it less about the actual you know, practical building of something, which again, $25,000 doesn't buy you very much, um, to actual further study engagements of outside engineers and design for uh, traffic counting improvements and that means um, enhancing um, you know, bicycle and, and pedestrian safety on the roadway. So with all of that being said, um, we have a variety of locations in the city that are being studied right now. Um, we use Fuss and O'Neill as our engineering consultants. Um, so we have a lot of good work that's underway that I just want to share with uh, this committee to let you know kind of what we're taking a closer look at. Um, so we are looking at multiple problematic intersections where we have high crash rates. Um, so some of you may remember the intersection of Pine and uh, Maple Street. Um, which actually had one of the highest crash rates in the region. So we used this traffic counting money to study that area and then implemented a four-way intersection and one-way at New York Paris. So that's an example of a past project. Um, so now let's talk about what we're looking at right now. We're looking at the intersections of Pinkley and Warner Street, Laurel Street and Route 66, Redford Drive and Birch Pit Road, 
Prospect Street and Crescent Street, Federal Street and Riverside Drive, and Cook and Capdale Street. So all have uh, fairly high crash rates. Um, some of them are quite bad. Cook and Capdale in particular is um, a, a very, very problematic intersection that we've heard a lot of commentary on and, and we'll do a blast that up. Um, so we are looking for um, kind of solutions to these conflict points. We're also looking at the feasibility of a roundabout or some other uh, intersection improvement at uh, the four-way stop at Prospect and Jackson Street uh, and, and Woodlawn. There's just kind of a lot of asphalt there and you know the stop signs are very far apart and people seem confused um, uh, about what to do and when to do it there. So we're looking at the feasibility of, of a roundabout there, I think, which, which you know, it's unclear if there's space for that, um, but we're going to try to come up with something. Um, we also have a engineering contract for a complete resurfacing of the bike path from Stop and Shop all the way up to Little Park. Um, so the what has happened is the trees have really grown in um, and are shading that. Um, we have drainage problems, um, but you know the path is like always wet for those of you who use it, and that's not helpful for pavement condition. So um, bringing raising that canopy and uh, resurfacing that in, entire bikeway. There's also a significant project to improve drainage at Adair Place. Um, the Russia culvert that's collapsing there. Um, so it needs fairly immediate attention, or it's going to take the bike path down the, uh, down the embankment. Um, so that is underway, and it all goes well. I hope to build that in like April or May and, and actually get that resurfaced next year, um, plumbing and plumbing. Um, we also um, have been working with Smith College after. Um, an incident with one of their employees on um, the crosswalk on West Street by the parking garage. Um, and Smith was kind enough to give a substantial financial donation to the city to do a, um, a study of the area on West Street um, and also on Route 9 from their main gate kind of down to the main intersection of Main Street. Um, so it was sort of a wrap around of their campus. Um, West Street is uh, a place that we've talked about a lot at TPC. Um, we have known speeding issues there, a lot of accidents, um, pedestrian conflict, bicycle conflicts, which is something that's been floating around for years. So we're very grateful to Smith for their report. Uh, or for their assistance in generating um, a report from our consultant, and I should have that report for release shortly, um, but our consultant has made a lot of recommendations about enhanced treatment to put all um, potential conflict zones, you know, uh, crosswalks, um, kind of the corridor running by folks liability and all the way down to the Smith College there to the consumer flood log. Um, so we have a lot of work that's ongoing, and I would encourage everybody who's here who's interested to really advocate for um, funding the traffic calming line and the DPW's budget when it comes time for the budget hearings and when it comes time, um, you know, make decisions about how resources are going to be allocated. So. Um, you know, I I raised the request to fifty thousand dollars over the last couple of years from twenty five thousand dollars. The mayor has been good enough to accommodate that request, but you know, the cost of everything goes up, and we have a lot of places that require kind of further study and further examination so that we can make data driven decisions. So I I would just you know if you're looking for um, a way to advocate or to help us, we could certainly use an increase in that funding so that we can engage our consultants to take a closer look at all of these locations. And then we can build improvements using Chapter 90 money or using um, the paving bond, um, which again isn't a ton of money, but uh, helps us make that. So those are DPW updates. And, uh, Great. Thanks, Donna. Any questions or comments? from the committee. Um, did you have a question, Brett? I have one. Um, 
Donna, thanks for all that update. That sounds like your work that's usually excellent is continuing. Thank you. Um, I heard one little thing that I was confused about or puzzled about, uh, which was the canopy over the rail trail bike path, multi-use path. Um, I have not heard that that's an issue before in terms of uh, wet path. Maybe I'm wrong or alone on that, uh, but I had not heard that. And I have heard many multiple uh, positive things about the shade that that brings in the summer and how it keeps the path cool. So I just was curious about that piece, but everything else sounds great. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, we're not looking to do, you know, blue sky utility trimming where you sort of go straight up, right, and open it to the sky. I mean, we can't even get, we couldn't even get a paving rig down there now um, because of how low the canopy is. Um, ah. So, it, I, I mean, we can't even get the, like an asphalt truck down there um, they, without doing some damage to the overhanging trees. So what we need to do is just kind of brown that canopy and raise it, you know, maybe eight feet or 10 feet to just kind of get it up um, and, and kind of off the sides because we're actually going to do damage if we try to bring vehicles in. There. So, yeah, it's pruning, yeah. not removal. Right, right. It's maintenance. It's maintenance. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Go ahead, James. Uh, Donna, I'll add my thanks for all the hard work and, and all the attention all around the, the city. Um, question, I'm not sure you can answer this right now, but uh, is it possible, we've raised this before, uh, is it possible for us to get the, the big picture from you of spending on traffic calming, spending on bike pad, uh, compared to overall spending on transportation, uh, including chapter 90? What, can you be a little more specific about what you're looking for? Sure. How, how much money does the city spend and contract out for uh, road-only related projects compared to how much the city spends for bike ped projects? So that's, it, that's a good question, but it's a complicated answer because typically we don't, you know, let's just say I go to pave the road you know, we're doing sidewalk work, we're installing, you know, a bike lane and, and striping it. Um, so it's really like a combination project. It, you know, I, I mean, like I can send you the, you know, the cut sheet out of the contract that has unit pricing for like, this is how much a, a, a Sharo cost, you know, when they come in right. Right for a bike lane. Um, but it's not, I, I mean, the way I could answer that question better is if we did like a discrete sidewalk project, you know, okay, well, here's just a discrete sidewalk project. There is no roadway reconstruction involved and it costs a hundred thousand dollars, but that's not typically how we operate. I'm not saying that's not, you know, we wouldn't do that. In fact, I, I'm sort of pushing for a discrete sidewalk project for, for next April to address you know, some of our worst locations. Um, you know, so it'd be easier for me to answer that if we actually compartmentalize like that, but we just don't. Okay, thanks, Donna. The, the motivation was I, I was hoping that it would it, that it would help us advocate for uh, that traffic calming budget line item uh, increase if we can compare it and and uh, and show. Uh, you know, look, we're spending uh, X million dollars a year of Chapter 90 and, and other money uh, from state and city on roadways. Uh, but, you know, X percent of, of trips are done by bike uh, and, and X percent, Y percent are done by on foot uh, and we should be spending accordingly. So that was the motivation. Well, you could you could almost make a ratio, James, where you where you say, okay, we have a million dollars in chapter ninety, and and that's what we have. We have a million dollars in chapter ninety, and we have a million and a half dollar paving bond, and and that's been set, you know, for my entire tenure here, um, which is eight years. So, you know, we have two and a half million dollars to deal with you know, roadways, which I'll put in quotation marks. And then what is the traffic calming appropriation typically been? $25,000. We raised it to $50,000 a couple of years ago. And what is our discrete sidewalk line in the budget? 
$150,000, so there's your ratio right there. You know, if you combine the traffic coming and your sidewalk money and sort of compare it to your paving bond in the chapter 90 money. And by the way, the paving bond in the chapter 90 can absolutely be worked for, can be used for pedestrian improvements. They can be used for bicycle improvements. I can pave the bike path with chapter 90. Um, but you can sort of look at that ratio and say, you know, it would be great to build out that traffic common line. It would be great to build out um, that sidewalk line and, and start to get a little bit of parity between uh, the chapter 9D and, and, and the roadway line. So I don't know if that's helpful. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for, Donna. Thank you very much. And I, I think even maybe to add to that is all the... Um, the continued requests for traffic calming and the the escalation of the physical improvement requests that are coming um, based on trying to address those traffic calming requests. So, you know, the the corridor, the long corridor, you know, we've been talking about what do we do with Prospect Street corridor, the entire length and the cost, including potentially the roundabout at you know, Woodlawn, but the same for State Street. That's been on the, you know, on the horizon for trying to address for a long time as you, you're you talking about projects that you've been <laughs> advocating for. So just the design itself to look at the that stretch is a significant, you know, is over almost $200,000. So that's already eating into that $1 million, you know. So anyway, Um Thanks, Donna. Any more questions on this before we go to F and T? We are sort of running short of time, and I want to make sure we get to the um, sign um, uh, bike path signage. And I think Freeman, you're going to talk about that from um, F and T's perspective. Is that right? I can say a few things about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to say one other thing that you know, listening to all the issues that have come up uh, today, I, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about is what's the role that F and T can play in advocating for some of those things. For example, just, um, you know, the tremendous need to educate the public for the cost of projects, the number of projects, um, you know, the, the relationship of that to taxes and and being involved in the city. Um, and Claudia is certainly, you know, uh, supporting the work that you're doing in your neighborhood. I've walked there uh, many times myself and have enjoyed it and I can certainly understand it. So. I just, you know, I, I want to bring some of these things back to FNT and and to try to figure out how we can um, be allies for for some of these projects and some of the the advocacy that needs to happen. You know, like Donna, you asked in terms of, uh, you know, educating people about the number of projects and the cost and and the budget uh, and advocating during the budget process. So I just wanted to say something about that. Um. And I don't know where that all that will lead, but it's something that I'll pursue with FNT. We have our annual meeting coming up and and uh, next week, so possibly we can say something about that uh, then. Um, so regarding the signage, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think everybody has probably seen the the language that uh, George and I guess Carolyn, you came up with. Uh, regarding the posting of these signs uh, regarding, you know, protocol and appropriate behavior on the, on the rail trail. Um, and by the way, I think it would be a good idea for us to start referring to or continue to referring to that as a rail trail rather than the bike path so that, so that it, we communicate clearly the, the fact that it's not just for bikes, you know, it's definitely for pedestrians as well. Um, so so FT, path. Excuse me. <laughs> Shared use path. Shared use path, right. Yeah. Um, uh, so what FNT is, uh, is proposing is posting some of these movable signs. Um, uh, I think we were going to, I think the agreement was um, to, to, um, to have four sets of three signs kind of communicating uh, what the, what the, you know, protocol is for using the bike path. Um, and we're prepared both to, to F and T is prepared both to pay for the signs, you know, that would be, uh, simple signs and also to move them to different locations along the trail. So they're not just in one place, 
uh, permanently, but different locations so that we're trying to reach everybody. Uh, and this is a short-term solution, obviously. So I don't know if folks had questions about that or, or I, as I I as I understood it, you were there were a couple of um, texts. I mean, George, I think we sent out the language. To, this has been over a month, but um, there were a couple. I think there were three signs and texts that you wanted to relay about. Um, you know, passing just general courtesy signs and then also a reminder about um, speeds, which um, sort of goes to your um, question previously, is um, reminding people about the um, the speeds when you have electric assist um, vehicles um, on the bike path, um, shared use path. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you have those, you want to do a screen share. I think there were three or four of them that I think you all came up with. And that was really the only question. The committee has already agreed that this makes sense. So I don't know that. Um, so that's not really on the table. I think it was just a qu question about text, but I don't know if you have that available or. Um, um, uh, unfortunately, not. I don't have it with me right now. Okay. Uh, I could look for it, but that would take some time. And yeah. Already over time, but if the committee is is uh, has already approved uh, going forward with this, I will make sure to send that language out to all the members of the committee and see if anybody has any further comments, and then we can go forward and and, and create those signs. Yeah, why don't you just send it to me because okay. um, there can't be any decision making outside of the public comment um, for open meeting law purposes. Okay, so that would be great. Okay. okay, do we have any text available? Yeah, I mean, I can pull it up. Um, I think George sent me some. This is, goes back a while back. It'll just take me two seconds though. <laughs> um. Let's see. Sure, this will work, but um, uh, it's going to take me some time as well. I think there was a, there were a couple ones that um, there was one that I. I had suggested probably wasn't appropriate. I can't remember the name of the, what it was, but it was sort of um, something about um, um, vehicle or um, bikes with pedals only. Um, and so that was a little concerning because of course, younger kids sometimes have um, bikes that, you know, that are more like, um, scoot alongs or whatever they, they, um, whatever they're called now. Um, so I don't, and I'm not sure that really gets it. I mean, the issue is really speed and the, the weight of the, and whether or not this is, um, full electric because, you know, fully electric, um, without pedal assist is not, uh, um, allowed on the shared use path, but, um, electric assist is, and then there's this, there's a cap on the speed. Um, for that. So that was the only one that I had suggested um, was probably not appropriate. Yeah, that's what I, I remember that as, as well. And I just want to say that, you know, clearly this is just a an interim step. This is not, you know, a permanent solution. We need much more, a, a much bigger initiative and, and better signage uh, overall uh, in terms of appropriate use of the trail. Yeah, I mean, I think just to sort of last note on that, I think we decided that temporary, this actually was better than sort of thinking about permanent signs because, um, and, and having someone oversee relocating them so they're almost fresh um, because they're not always in the same place. Plus you get different, um, you get them at different points on the on the path. Um, and we had talked, I don't know if it was at TPC or in Bike Ped about, um, not wanting to have permanent signage on the path. So uh, I, I still am, oh, sorry, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that we endorse it. I'm happy that the project is going ahead. It's a great thing. I I do think as long as we're endorsing it, we probably should see the the language. Yes, please. You know, yeah. I, I would hate to get out there and think, yeah. 
oh my God, we endorse that. So yeah. I'm sure, you know, I, I have total faith in him in mm -hmm. and and you Freeman and, and George, but I think um, probably more eyes on it is, is better than okay. fewer. So we'll yeah, just I'm make sorry. sure to get that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry okay. I didn't have it. I, I just had, I thought everybody had seen it already. Yeah. Okay. So we can put that on next. Um, we are getting close to the end. Any other comments from the committee members? Okay. Um, I see one public comment um, hand up by Linda. Um, one quick comment, um, if you want to unmute. I do have a question about that electric sign. You know, class four full throttle bikes, they all have pedals. And that's how the legality exists, that they then can be going 28 at full throttle. But then if someone sees them, they just pedal. So I'm curious about that signage as well, because I do find these class four full throttle 100 pound bikes on the bike path pretty terrifying when they're coming at you. Um, I don't know if you've had that experience, but there's a lot of them. And this weekend we ran into packs of them on the path. Thanks. We share your concern. We're working on the text. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, thank you all. And um, hope you have a good end of the month holiday if you celebrate. <laughs> and um, we'll see you at the next meeting.